Hi everybody, this is Piranha Z06 doing a review of my Obudo Racing Flight Simulator cockpit. It is the Obudo Revolution cockpit, which I got the, as you can see, the 5.1 speaker surround adapter and also the triple monitor adapter. Um, I've got some other things I want to show you about it, um, so let's just get started. First of all, the PC is a main performance PC. It is an Intel Core i7 4790 at 3.5 gigahertz with 8 gigs of RAM. Um, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 760 video card with 2 gigabytes of onboard RAM. Um, just a built-in, uh, an Asus sound card, 5.1 surround card. Uh, two 1 terabyte hard drives a Blu-ray player and D CD burner with Windows 7 Home Premium 64-bit. So a pretty basic gaming computer uh, for main performance. Uh, I've built PCs in the past and could have built my own gaming PC, but I'm getting older and less patience when doing that, so I just ordered one this time for main performance, and it is really cool. I like the big giant box with lots of big fans, some cool LEDs, so really recommend uh, their products. There was a couple of issues when I got it home. The sound card front panel wasn't working. The cable was unplugged, so they um, told me what to check for that, and that didn't work, and they also forgot to install the sound card driver, which I was able to do, no problem. So a couple of minor glitches, but nothing major, and their customer service was really great and um, available 24-7. So, Or not 24-7, but available when I needed it. Um, as you can see, you got three monitors as well. These are Asus 27-inch LEDs, uh, 1080p monitors, and a cheap set of Logitech 5.1 speakers that I have mounted on around. So I use this for a racing and flight simulator, as you can see. The Revolution comes with this articulating keyboard tray with like four hinges around it that allow it to swing around. So as you can see, I have it pretty full with my uh, HOTAS um, throttle and joystick and then a small Logitech wireless keyboard and then I just use a stationary rollerball mouse over there on top of the PC since I don't have room for it on the keyboard tray. Also got a couple of, these are called MFDs, uh, multi-function display, they're for flight simming. A lot of people as you, in virtual fighter jets you'll see one on each side of the uh, center um, console area inside a cockpit, but I've got them connected together. I took the MFDs down so that you could just see how I've connected them with just a piece of steel, spare steel. I drilled a couple holes and put a couple of screws to hold them together so that when they are up in place they are connected and won't fall. This is a under cabinet iPad holder basically that I have mounted to the if you can see that mounted to the extra it's a shifter plate adapter arm which I also have my shifter mounted to but I'll send I'll have the links of everything where to get all the products where I got them uh, the prices I paid for them um, how to connect the holder to the um, shifter arm mount area if you want to mount that and do that you can mount an iPad there which I had done because I used iHUD um, heads-up display thing for iRacing. I, it just crashed a lot. I really liked it, but I just couldn't get it to work consistently, so I went away from it. And what I use the MFDs for is I haven't used program too many things for the flying yet, but I do use them as black boxes in iRacing. So if you do much racing in iRacing, you will know how valuable it is to have buttons at your fingertips and I've also got a link to um, the sim pit which gave me the idea for using that that's uh, Sean Cole's new uh, iRacing or sim racing website since he split off from Darren Ganji so one of the major mods that I've done as you can see that's my steering wheel tilted forward down there and you can do this there are four bolts that hold that that plate up the mounting plate for the steering wheel up in the right position but if you want to do flight sims then the steering wheel is kind of blocking your center screen some of the time so what I wanted to do was to be able to 
have it so that I can swing it down out of the way and do flight sim stuff and not have to unbolt four bolts every time. So I'm going to show you what I did and I'm going to turn on a light here so that you can see as I show. So what I've done is I've put I drilled a hole and put a clevis pin in which is just an axle all the way through and across and then I use a cotter pin on the other side to hold it in place and then I started off by drilling one or using the existing hole and I made a couple of shafts to put through and lock it into place but it was still a little loose and a little lower than I wanted it so I drilled a third hole so Let's see if you can see, there's three holes there. One's got the pin in it, which is the, basically the axle holding it in place now. And then there are two other holes that I have drilled. There you can see them a little better. Just to the right and lower that I put two other homemade clevis pins inside when I raise it up out of the way. I will show you my two homemade pins here. They're just um, some steel pipe. Drilled some hole. I did have to custom the pipe because I wanted it to fit the holes exactly that were already existing. I just wanted to demonstrate one other item that I have, and it is the uh, head tracking. So if you haven't seen this, which you probably have if you're watching iRacing and flight sim videos, it allows you to look around. So as you're flying, you can turn your head and look around like in real life. Look down at the instruments. Some of the instruments are clickable. So it's not on my head right now, so I'm, I'm holding it with my hand, so it's kind of jittery and jerky, but trust me, when you're using it, it's flawless. I love it. Absolutely love it. Makes it very realistic feeling when you're flying around. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to move the keyboard out of the way, put the steering wheel back up with the two pins. Okay, we're back. I've got it put into place, and I just wanted to show you the pins in place now with the, uh, the two extra holes that I drilled and it is upright and in the correct position and pretty stable so um, while I'm back here I'll show you if you can see some of the wire management uh, it's pretty clean as much as can be expected there's a lot of wires uh, but it's pretty clean looking uh, the steering wheel by the way is the Thrustmaster T500RS and pedal set the pedal set I do have the new Rickmo Tech uh, load cell mod on the brake pedal so it's using weight instead of position so it's really cool I'm still getting used to it but um, I think I'm gonna like it I'm gonna sit down and race a couple of laps and put the headset on and the tracking so that you can see it all okay I'm in the cockpit got the steering wheel back up uh, the MFDs are back in place uh, the keyboard is at close hand but out of the way got the headset on with the tracking on and I've got the pro clip uh, it also comes with a hat clip, but I, the pro clip is uh, better and it doesn't require reflectives. It work, has LEDs, so it's a lot smoother. Um, so I'm just going to turn a couple of laps and uh, turn the speakers on. So we'll do a, a lap here and then I'll come back and close up.
lap around Mid Ohio in the BMW Z4. Um, it was a horrible lap, I admit, but it was just for demonstration purposes. So um, I've got things here like I can center the head tracking program to a button here. I've got all my pit stop strategies. Um, I'll bring it around and show you. I've got a uh, template that I've created for, to show the buttons that I have programmed. Uh, I'll have the template for download if you have the MFDs and want to have your own custom. Um, you can put your, it's just an Excel spreadsheet. You can put that in there any way you want. Uh, also, I have, I don't know if you can see it, I have a Brass Monkey heads up display or dashboard with the RPMs, uh, some lap information, the gear, speed, that, things like that. Um, so that I don't have to see it on screen and I'm not taking up uh, screen real estate. So uh, I'll also have s screenshots of my graphic settings. I don't know if you could see uh, right now I'm getting 75, 80 frames per second. Um, the screens only support up to 60, so anything above 60 is, is good. Um, and in races, uh, the lowest I've seen is it's dipped down into the 40s, but most of the time above 60, even in the full races. So they're not, everything's not tweaked to the highest possible, but I don't, you know, my graphics card can only do so much with three screens and a lot of people and a lot of graphics. So I'll take screenshots and have those posted for you if you are interested in those. Uh, otherwise, feel free to leave me a message or a comment and I'll answer any questions you have. Again, I I love everything about it. There's, I have no complaints about any of it. Some of it obviously takes a little tweaking. Um, I'll post the link where I got the idea for the, uh, the iPhone holder here so that I can see the dashboard. If you have any questions, let me know. Hope you enjoyed it.